So there was a question on Tech Interview Pro in our private group, and uh, there was a question that asked, what are your thoughts on career outlook for senior data scientist versus senior data engineer? If someone has a choice between the two roles for their next job advancement, which one would you suggest? Um, So I answered this, and uh, I kind of wanted to make a video talking about this question too, because I have a lot of things to say. And um, as you know, I worked at Facebook back then. I used to be a data scientist. I think I could say it now. We'll see. But um, personally, I do feel that data engineers are sometimes a little bit like a second class citizen. I mean, sometimes data scientists too, but I feel like data engineers can feel like that a little bit more. Now, my roommate is a data engineer, so don't tell him that. But... um, I personally think in a product heavy company culture, uh, I'd say that PMs are the first class citizen and then data scientists and then data engineer if we're talking in the data space. And the reason is because PMs, they often are the ones who make executive decisions. They're the ones who kind of own the feature, own the product, right? And then for that, they tend to ask the DS a lot for product questions like, oh, what are user retentions? Oh, can we cut this by um, by country? Oh, can we cut this by this? And they have a lot of data asks. And in some sense, it's a little bit of like bitch work because they just want to get it done. But then they realize that, oh, you know, this information, they actually don't even care about it, but they just want to know just because of their curiosity and it doesn't actually change the decision of the product. That happens a lot. And then for the DS to do those data ask, they need the data to be structured in a certain way. So then because of that, they ask the DEs to do it, right? So as you can see, it's a chain of bitch work, right? DS, the data scientists, they don't get impact for helping PMs answer their curiosity. DEs, data engineers, they don't get impact from creating these temporary tables or temporary pipelines just to ask, just to serve this one task for the data scientists. So that's why, um, you know, it's like the lower you are in the chain of bullshit, sorry, not bullshit, but like the shitty task, the more it tends to be uh, not that impactful, right? So, I believe that politically, being a DS is better than being a data engineer. I also talked about, you know, politics at work a lot. And uh, I think a lot of people misunderstood what I said. They think that, oh, no, it's terrible. There's lots of politics. But I didn't say that it's a bad thing. Politics is part of life. Politics is part of society. When we have multiple people working for different things, having different incentives, politics is super important and you should be extremely good at it because that is how you negotiate. That is how you get together with a lot of people with different incentives so that you can all commonly work on the same goal right or even if it's not the same goal you could work on different things such that it's mutually beneficial for each other cool now the thing is yes there's a lot of like crappy work going down and then that's usually what ds managers and de managers do they try to fend off these ridiculous requests so that their report can be a lot more productive in real work right okay so let's talk about ds or de versus ds So I have a lot of friends um, that are data engineers. And to be honest, they say that they don't really like data engineers that much because um, because in some sense, it's not intellectually challenging, especially at a big company where a lot of these hard distributed data problems are already solved. Right. So you're not going to be doing any spark or Hadoop jobs and stuff like that. These are these are abstracted. The thing you do as a DE is you mostly write SQL based stuff, right? SQL based pipelines, because that's the easiest way to write it. And they have abstracted everything such that it makes it easy. And then what you have to do is you just have to organize your product areas data, and you have to monitor these ETL pipelines, and all of these things, they're basically like, um, like SQL kind of work, or just like maintenance and like using the, um, the tools that we've already been that have already been built. Right. And you also get paid less than a software engineer. So I think a lot of people, a lot of data engineers, at least at Facebook, I don't know about any other companies, they're a little bit more dissatisfied because their job is less intellectually stimulating and they get less equity. So I think that's one of the biggest cons of data engineer. But I am biased because I was a data scientist, so I might not know a lot of things about data engineers. Cool. So for data science analytics, 
and I mean analytics, especially for people who want to get into data science and they don't have a master or PhD in something very particular, like in machine learning, usually you're going to be ending up doing data science analytics. Now, most people come into this thinking that it's like big data or like machine learning kind of thing, but they quickly get disappointed because they realize that it's not, that's, that's not what it is, right? Especially if you're a new grad coming from school, unfortunately, you're not going to be doing any um, innovative machine learning algorithm stuff. You're not going to be inventing anything, right? You have to be a little bit realistic. So, but I do personally think that data science analytics is super rewarding, right? Like, um, like the thing about new grads is they focus too much on the technical part of work. You know, they focus too much on trying to grow in terms of their technical skills, which, which makes sense because in the beginning, you need technical skills. You need these foundational skills to be useful in work, to do stuff, right? But to be honest, the technical part is usually the easiest part of the job at a large company, at least. Like, um, if you want to be a data scientist, then you're the person that loves to think about the product, loves to think about what to do next for the product, and you want to be the expert on the product because you love digging into the data, finding uh, finding insights, and then using these insights to help the company or help the product become better and increase those metrics, right? And yeah. So that is actually what a data scientist is supposed to be. You are the core of the strategy and direction of the product. And your superpower is that you're able to transform raw data into strategic decisions. That's your job. It's kind of like, you know, when we talk about programmers, they transform Red Bull into workable software, right? It's kind of like that. So <clears throat> I do think that it doesn't really matter what job you choose because like the people who advance the most, the people who um, succeed at work are people who do not restrict themselves to their job function, right? And you should always be striving to think like, um, what can I currently do with my set of skills that would have the most impact on my team? Like that's what you're supposed to do. That's how you're supposed to choose which job you wanna do. It depends on what skills or interests you have the most. But then once you're at the job, do not restrict yourself, right? Because the people who do not restrict themselves are the ones who, um, who succeed the most. For example, I wrote a few examples, like engineers with data analytics skills. What you can do is as an engineer, you could find user problems yourself, dig into the data, find issues with your product, right? And then now you know that there's a great future opportunity because of your data skills. And then you could argue for it like uh, with your with their PM team, with your product team, and then just build it. And then that would have a lot of impact. And then if you're a PM with, uh, with engineering skills, then you can prototype an MVP, you can, or you can create an experiment for a feature and then just build it out and then test it out and then see that there's positive metrics or that it's good for the, or you found product market fit with that experiment, with that 1% experiment. And then boom, there you go. You, you're able to, uh, create an MVP and then validate your hypothesis and then have this project up in the high priority list on your roadmap. High impact for PMs. As a data scientist, if you have PM skills, then essentially you can set the vision and also uh, the roadmap for your team because you know, you're able to have the data skills to back up all of your arguments for what should be the high priority stuff to do for the company or for your team. And then you're able to prioritize all these features because like I said, you have these data skills. And then because you have this leadership skills or these PM skills that I said you have, you're able to launch your team to success because of that. So even if you have a weak PM, you could carry the team. So, I mean, in conclusion, pick a job according to your skills, and, but never restrict yourself on your job title. They pay you to invest in you so that in the future, you could make a huge difference. So take that opportunity to invest in yourself so that you could be a beast at everything. Oh.